And Urban, among the different theories of consciousness, there is the idea that quantum physics is really important. This uh, uh, ORC OR that has uh, 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 Roger Penrose and Stuart Hameroff have been uh, talking about for years. Uh, most uh, neuroscientists reject that because you don't need to go to the quantum level to understand how the brain works. You see the action potentials of neurons, uh, 100 billion or more in the brain. Uh, physicists, many, reject it also because you can't have quantum um, events being significant in a, in a hot, wet environment that is the brain. You have quantum physics all over the world. The entire universe works by quantum physics, but it's no different in the brain than in this chair. So you've done some work that at least can cast some experimental evidence on what happens in, in neurons in microtubules. Yeah. Is that right? How, how, how does that work and what's the significance? Yeah. So when we go down to the atomic scale, suppose you have a molecule, you are looking at the atoms. If you add a single electron, then electron doesn't go to a single atom. So 13% of the single electron goes to certain atoms, 40% here, 40% there at a different atom. So even a single electron, which could be represented by a wave function, mm -hmm. that is called psi. This is what quantum mechanics is, right? Yeah. Now, if you have a large structure, and if you find that you, when you add an electron, the whole potential distribution changes in the same manner just that like that happens in a single atom, you can say this is quantum-like. So when I did experiment with, uh, with uh, protein, tubulin protein and microtubule, of course, I found that the, if, you, uh, if you pump a particular AC frequency, the re resistance disappears. So it becomes very low resistance. So it's almost a quantum-like system. Mm. So that's what they have been arguing about. So definitely we saw that. Uh, and anybody can verify. But that's what I, I call the origin of singing or of the vibration or the resonance frequency. At certain frequencies, every single molecule pass the energy it becomes resistanceless so depending on the symmetry of this depending on the symmetry uh, a molecule switches from one symmetry to another symmetry with a very particular frequency and then you will find that it's very low resistance so definitely the or core theory or objective uh, orchestrated objective reduction theory which suggests that everything is happening inside the microtubule and the microtubule mass is important. I have not verified all part of it. As much as I could do is, is taking the microtubule and trying to understand its quantum behavior. So I can confidently say that it is a quantum device and it goes to the ballistic regime at certain frequencies. So uh, does that support um, orchestral objective reduction? That I don't know, because that um, Stuart Hameroff and then Roger Penrose can say well, whether my finding supports the, their claim and other things or not, because there are gravitational part of it, because gravitational collapse and then other mm -hmm. things are associated, which um, I do not have much understanding to, to, to comment on. Because, because from that part, I went, I found something so remarkable and so beautiful the rhythm and music of the things and then a lot of rhythms yeah. are coming together, vibration chains mm -hmm. and they are making a chain and chain and chain. And then all the proteins are talking together, not only the microtubule, just like microtubule, there are another component, actin protofilament, just like microtubule. And they are talking to each other just like a, like a brother and sister, so mm -hmm. harmonic, complementary to each other. And many different kinds of protofilaments exist in the neuron. And I found such a beautiful coexistence of harmony and then music around it to do a biological work that I, I try to enjoy that and try to understand more towards it. So, so, so your view is, is not the uh, traditional quantum physics of consciousness, although your view, research can be used to support it from their point of view, but you move in a different direction because you're not focusing just on microtubules. You're, you're focusing on the entire structure and all the proteins and the millions of things going on in individual neuron and how they all work together with yes, yes. Uh, harmonies and frequencies yeah. that, that mm -hmm. produce it. So it's mm -hmm. a, a very different kind of theory. Yeah. So basically, I'm also looking at the quantum properties of, the, of other proteins also. They are also significant. Why should you leave them or why should you reject them? So everything is important in their own way. They have 
their contributions. That's why proteins are getting changed. New proteins are coming yeah. up. But, he, but here's the fundamental question. Sure, the neuron is a, is a cell. It has to operate. It needs uh, mitochondria. It needs uh, energy. It has to function as a cell. Mm. The question is whether all those factors and all the quantum mechanics and everything else you're talking about is significant in the informational part, the unique thing that a neuron does that other cells don't do in the same way, that it can combine with other neurons to create circuits and, and, the, and the processing of information, however it occurs, because we don't find that in, in other cells. We're all, everything else you're talking about, all the quantum physics going on in a cell, you find in all, every cell, yeah, in yeah. heart cells and liver cells yeah. and bladders everywhere. There's no difference. Yes. In this particular point, I have to suggest, say one thing that if you look at microtubule, the, the number of vibrations that it has, specific characteristic frequency with which it starts vibrating, is large in number. It covers a huge band of 10 to the power 3 hertz to 10 to the power 10 hertz. So it's a very adjustable or very harmonizing device. So undoubtedly, this is a very, very important device. And and the number of microtubules in neuron is very large in number. It's packed. Several five thousands of microtubules are there. It's 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 a network of 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 microtubules. Even in the living cell, any cell you take, it's full of microtubules. Right, right. Everywhere is full of microtubules. Now, whether microtubule is the only thing that is consciousness or other things, this is a very far distant question. The first thing is that how the information processing is being done, and how the decision is being made. Right? So, a set of neurons which has large strings of microtubules and vibrations are much more compatible to harmonize with others with a, with a very discrete frequency band, wide frequency band. That is the beautiful part of it. And, and is that different than other kinds of cells? Yes. In so, the neuron, the microtubule in neuron yeah. is, is a different character? No, no, not a different character. They are bundled together. Right. But they're bundled together. So what happens is that depending on length, our experiment shows, depending on length, the composition changes. Just like a, if you have a piano, if you yeah, play yeah, at yeah, different yeah. strings, okay. the, uh, the composition changes. In the same way, my, uh, microtubule can change its length and different kind of composition is created. Doesn't this occur in other kinds of cells, liver cells and heart cells and other? In other cells also, microtubules are not bundled, packed. They are microtubules are discrete floating around and they are changing their length continuously. But in neuron and the axons, it is fixed. It's getting a bundled concrete wearing. So the frequency band that is created in the neuron neurons itself, the band of frequencies and harmonizing it and then the, that capacity makes neurons very special compared to the others. Not only microtubules, other protofilaments are also there, but Microtubule is the king among all other protofilaments and then proteins because it has the largest bandwidth and many frequency peaks, highly dense mm. frequency peaks. So it's a very special material for for entire biological body. So 50 trillion cells of our body, everywhere you will find those um, uh, microtubules um, are, are, are there. But they are different in neurons, you're saying. The integration is different. Yes, well, that's the They're lot are packed together, and then you, you you have thousands and thousands of strings put together, and then wherever you're going, you are taking that one. So mm. in this way, sense it is, it's very different. So that that as I said, that always uh, the the degree of intelligence depends because I, uh, my suggestion is that from Planck world to the entire universe everything is a chain of vibrations and whole our body is a string of vibrations so more we harmonize we become more intelligent but how can we get that property of harmonizing how we change how we accommodate yeah. so we need a, some smart device that has extremely large bandwidth at a very small place and those are the neurons so it has a bundle of microtubules which has got such a huge number of peaks there, they can harmonize and they can compose the music yeah. much better yeah. than other elements. That's what makes them so special. In that sense, I think the Professor Stuart Hameloff's contribution is very fundamental because even now, all the people who are trying to build the human brain, they are suggesting that only they look at the membrane. Don't look at yeah, inside. Right inside the neuron. Just look at membrane, membrane fires right, 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 and it right, goes out. Right. Why? 
this is so ridiculous proposal i i can't believe that anybody can can suggest this kind of thing you just you just 1907 it was said that membrane is everything yeah. inside the membrane if you look at the neuron it's a bundle jungle of microtubules many many protofilaments many proteins suppose you are listening to me at this point of time sound is going through you neuron is firing at a kilohertz yeah. frequency uh -huh. but those proteins they are operating in a terahertz frequency some right. of them are gigahertz frequency microtubules are operating operating in megahertz frequency so entire clock so yeah. many clocks are operating simultaneously people just ignore those kind of things and they are saying that they are going to make a human brain so for them 200000 inputs come to a neuron and 30000 outputs go there so they say that all ions come in the threshold and one decision goes away so one to one just not nothing more than that yeah but if you take into account microtubule and its music then all 200000 inputs are very different they have a musical composition of their own and when they send it out by 30000 output they send a completely different vibration or set of composition of music so when you as soon as you take into contribution of microtubule every neuron structure is different when i'm talking to you some of neurons some of the neurons in your brain could decide to change the circuit it's changing continuously yes, changing circuit right, because right, it's right. learning something right. right so when the change according to the existing science existing neuroscience nothing is nothing should happen because ions come and ions go it's right. just one decision making but if you took, take into account microtubule whole scenario changes because it's a new kind of composition of music that is added to the neuron And, and how is that expressed? I mean, what are these thirty thousand? The, the neuron has a has a, a spike. Uh, the, the, that spike passes through, say, all thirty thousand of them. So we see the axon potential being fired, and we say that's oh, okay. It's fired one, but it is not one. That that is a potential flow. So potential is required for microtubules to vibrate, so different composition to create. So every cell has membrane, and we 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 say. So all the intelligence of the universe is of the biological system is there in the membrane. So that's a very, very, um, what should I say, primitive view of looking, mm -hmm. looking at. So neuroscience need a fundamental radical change and look at inside material who are clocking with each other. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine just to open up a single ion channel of your neuron? A protein needs to go through 25 different step by step mm -hmm. conformational changes mm -hmm. at the speed of terahertz. Amazingly fast, yeah. and who is going to take into account? Nobody is taking those into account because those are very complex. That's why every single neuron in your brain is different. My brain is different. If somebody maps your brain and try to say that I have understood the human brain, that is which is going on all over the world right yeah. now, that is absolutely ridiculous because your brain continuously changes. Why? My brain is very different. Every single neuron of yeah. my brain is very different from every single neuron yeah. of your brain. Why? This have nature doesn't make anything. For, 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 for playing games or yeah. making jokes, yeah. it has a purpose. So, so that purpose, that that purposeful world actually unravels as soon as you take into account microtubules, protofilaments, proteins, and their clocking and their interaction mechanism. So, in that sense, or core whether it is correct or wrong is a different question. Look at its contribution. It is. it is taking whole world of neuroscience 100 years ahead of the current system